even though I left my UV A shades inside. Let me put my shades on. Holy shit, that looks like Macri's merchandise van over there. And I'm not even kidding. I don't know if y'all can see it or not, is it? No. What the hell would it be doing in Lancaster? Mm -hmm. What's up, everybody? It is Elegant Eddie here. This is E and Double D's Sports Fanatics Podcast. I know I've been doing a lot of racing content. I'm riding the high that was this week. Um, not just in central Pennsylvania, but across the globe in racing. Um, I seen one of my personal favorites, Justin Peck, finish second at Lincoln Wednesday. He got two wins the rest of his weekend, Friday and Sunday. And Saturday, he finished second as well. So two wins in two seconds, four podiums. Pretty impressive shit from a guy who just couldn't shake the gremlins um, earlier in the year. It's nice to see him getting the results he deserves. Um, on top of seeing a PA outlaw, uh, Jacob Allen scoring the popular win Wednesday, and then being a part of Brent Marks' victory lane celebration, scoring one for the posse at the Morgan Cup Saturday evening. Awesome weekend in racing, but I know some of y'all came here for the Philly content. Well, you could be going to my OnlyFans and kissing my ass if you don't have... <laughs> Do I have an OnlyFans? I don't know. I don't know. But... I try to give you guys content as I see fit. I know Philly Mike's got the Philly talk on lock and key, so I basically shadow what he does. He is my main source for Philly news, so let's get into this one. Uh, Doc Rivers and James Harden are staying in Philly. Um, so what I want to do is give y'all three peaks and three pits about that and give my analysis at the end whether I'm for or against this move um three three peaks first number one number one doc does not play the ball games okay doc you know say what you want about his coaching and we'll get into that he does not play these games and I feel like he did his best to get the team fired up uh, game six, and you could see him on the sidelines urging his guys to get it together, and it just, the team just did not want to, did not seem to want to be on the court for game five or game six. So you can't really chalk that up to Doc. Number two, or, well, let's get into Harden's number one. Um, he's an elite player when he's on. When he is on, he can take games over as we've seen in game four. He has the ability to be aggressive and dominate from the top when he is on his game. Number two for each. Um, Doc Rivers has credentials. And I know, again, things we'll get into. Doc Rivers has credentials. He has an NBA championship. He's taken teams to the conference finals. He has the track record, and I, so who's to say he can't do it if you add a Dame Lillard or a Bradley Beal or Zach Levine, whatever, um, Tyler Halliburton, whatever. Uh, for James Harden, he's got leadership ability. He's been in a lot of locker rooms, and again, he could rub off on our young guys like Maxi, like Thibel, like Paul Reed. Oh. Number three. Um, let's go with the fact that the players seem to like both. The guys seem to love Doc and they love Harden. And they rid him, rid them both of any blame. Which that could be enabling a little bit. Let's get into the pits, a.k.a. the cons. Number one, Doc and James Harden have both choked on the biggest of stages. It's no secret. Um, Doc Rivers has had teams that should have won plenty of NBA Finals, and he only has one to show for it. James Harden has been on teams that should have won the NBA Finals and just didn't do it. Number two, both have been known to ruin chemistry in the locker room. Doc Rivers has a huge ego. We knew that when we signed him, and we found it out, if you forgot, 
during his post-game presser, Game 6, saying that this team was picked to go nowhere. <laughs> Excuse me? James Harden has been known to rip locker rooms apart as well as he has to be a leader as well. So it's a little inconsistent there. Number three, um, both have both have choked on the biggest of stages. That one was meant to be locker room, like trauma, the trouble in the locker room, dramatic. Uh, this one, on, on paper, they have both been known to choke. Jock Rivers, again, teams that should have won the finals. James Harden, 11 points in a crucial do or die, go or go home game six, inexcusable. So that leads me to my wrap-up analysis. I think it's a bad move especially to pay James Harden all that money when we got a guy butting beneath our eyes into a superstar in Therese Maxey. Uh, I almost called him Therese Morey, not to be confused with Darrell Morey, who is making the move to keep Harden. I know it's his boy. I get that. But is he really worth 200 plus million right now at this point in his career? I don't know. I don't believe it, especially when you got bigger fish to fry. For Doc Rivers, again, um, he just doesn't seem to have the intensity needed to get these guys fired up, even in his best attempts. Doesn't do it. His lineup mismanagement is, quite frankly, head-scratching and just really, like, off-base. And, again, I think it's a bad move. Um... Can Doc Rivers win in the right, with the right nucleus? Absolutely. But we're paying Harden now. We're going to need to break the bank to go out and get another superstar. And one that we could have had, Jimmy Butler, was chosen over, I know he said over Toby Harris. He was, he, they chose Ben Simmons and, um, and Brett Brown over over Jimmy Buckets, and that was a slap in the face. We could be a championship team right now if we kept Jimmy. I feel we're making the same mistake in keeping Doc and James Harden because we're keeping ourselves from getting in an elite player here and an elite coach like Sammy Cassell, who I feel in the next level could be the next big-name coach. What do you guys think about all this? What, how do you feel about Harden and Doc Rivers staying? Let me know in the comment section below wherever this is posted. And I'll see you guys next time with some more Sixers content.